Good evening, everybody. Matt and Roy back once again, back to you with a science and technology live stream, probably more technology than science, to be perfectly honest with you. I noticed a few people here mentioning, uh, I want to learn something about science. Well, you're going to have to bring it to the table because um, I'm not a big science person either, but you know what? I'm always willing to learn myself. And the reason I'm doing this is one of my subscribers who just goes by the name Henry, and I pulled up his channel, doesn't have any content, so it's really hard to say who he is, left me a really long um, comment saying that I need to get back to my roots on my channel and start devoting more, uh, more time to technology-related videos. And I thought, what better way to do that than to start with a technology-related live stream? So let's see who's commenting right now. Eric goes, I'm a science nerd. I'm all in. Well, there you go. 86 subscribers till Matt hit 7K. I'll be honest with you, I have not looked at the subscriber count recently. Uh, okay, yeah, that's about right. I just haven't had a chance. So basically, I want you guys to think all about all your science, your technology, your computer questions, anything that we can nerd out to here. And uh, let's see what conversations we can come up with. Eric is one sub away from 1600. Well, put some more content out and it'll get up there. Believe me, you, you'll be surprised how quickly you'll gain subscribers. Liam Dyson, evening from the UK, Matt. Hope you're doing well. I'm doing just fine. I'm actually wearing a shirt that I picked up at a garage sale recently. It is a large shirt. So, yes, I am officially in a large size shirt, thankfully. Probably not going to get any smaller than that. Baxter. Hey. My cat's being naughty. He wants out, so he's kind of clawing at the carpeting. Oh, uh, let's see. Eight watchers, nine watchers, seven likes. All right. Well, thank you, uh, Liam. I, I appreciate people telling me that. I don't always feel trim, but I can kind of tell a bit of a difference here, especially since uh, I went under the 240-pound mark. Now I start feeling like I have a lot more energy. Excuse me. I got to let the cat out. So all right, now that the cat is away, we can go ahead and play. Rick Lake asks, hey, Matt, you have any interest in the i9 or the latest Ryzen? A passing interest. You got to remember, in my line of work, most of my clients are business people, um, you know, and they don't need the latest and the greatest. They don't need an i9 or a Ryzen or really even an i7. Uh, most of the people I deal with, um, I actually sell refurbished computers to. I actually very seldom uh, build a computer from scratch anymore. And again, it's just not my clientele. I don't really do the gaming thing. I do build computers for people that do um, web designing and uh, video editing, stuff like that. But most of the time, I can put a computer together for somebody um, secondhand and basically fully refurbish it. So yeah, that was kind of a long answer. But no, I use, I, I, you know, probably the next system I get that's going to replace this XPS 8700 will be something like an i9 or a Ryzen. But other than that, probably not going to see too many of those on my channel. Thank you. Mark says, I'm looking good. I feel just fine. Liam Dyson, a bit of a difference. I started watching your videos with you doing food reviews of McDonald's. You're like a different man, my friend. Looking forward to tonight's discussion, mate. Well, thank you. And you probably not going to see me doing too many more fast food related videos. I honestly don't eat that stuff anymore. Probably the last time I ate a McDonald's burger or any food item other than 
maybe the occasional shake or smoothie was probably about a year and a half, two years ago. And honestly, I don't miss it because that stuff is full of salt and fat. And okay, I got one for you. So going with the science part portion of tonight's live stream, do you realize that there are more chemicals, scientific stuff, chemicals that were made in a lab in McDonald's foods than there are actual ingredients that are natural things that you and I can easily pronounce. And that's a fact. You can actually look that up. Uh, McDonald's uses, unfortunately, a lot of chemicals. And the reason they do that is their flavor enhancers. They need to have their food taste good. And the chemicals make that food taste good. It plays tricks on our brain saying, mm, mm, that tastes so good. It's nice and sweet and salty and savory is a word that they tend to use. And it's just another word for them using a heck of a lot of chemicals that aren't good for our bodies. Robert Jones asks, Matt, do you think any old tech will come back? Uh, it actually already has, believe it or not. And I've talked about this uh, somewhat in, late, in, in past live streams. Um, VCRs, uh, cassette decks, reel-to-reels, um, man, even uh, phonographs, record players. I actually picked up a record player, uh, a Sony record player at the thrift store a couple weeks ago that was less than a year old. And it's a new model that they're producing. And do you know, if you go into a Best Buy store, they took out CDs. They don't sell CDs at all anymore. And they actually replaced them with records. So we're actually going backwards in time. We're taking out the CDs and replacing them with records. And I would not be surprised to see some select Best Buy start even selling cassette tapes again, because it, everything, we're in such a retro groove now. Um, people just want the nostalgia of it. And that's, that's a good word for it. It's nostalgic. Mr. Jimmy asks, do you ever think MP3 slash MP4 players will be popular again? No, I don't. And the reason I don't think they'll ever be popular again has to do with this thing right here, what we call a smartphone. This can do everything, a MP3 player, an iPod, uh, a Rio player, uh, um, a, a creative jukebox, if you can go back that far, can do. And I don't see people going back to that because this is one device that you have to carry. Back in the early 2000s, you had to carry a phone, usually a flip phone. You had to carry an MP3 player. Um, you had a PDA, usually, if to, to keep your appointments and everything in. And then you had a camera, like if you need to take pictures. That's four devices. Now, those four devices are replaced with this one smartphone. So highly doubt that we're ever going to see um, see MP3 players, MP4 players make a resurgence. Storm Spotter. Uh, yeah, I did I did see that message you sent. I, I didn't know what it was. It's a you said it's a Dell Dimension 2350. I think you said you wanted to upgrade that to Windows 10. Uh, no, I don't believe you can. I think a Dimension 2350, the highest you can go on that would be Windows 7. And that would, even that would be pushing it because that's running DDR1 um, or the first DDR RAM. And I think that maxes out like at 768 megabytes. Okay, yeah, Windows 7. Yeah, you should be able to put Windows 7 on. It's not going to run great. Um, because again, I think that particular Dell memory caps out at about 768 megabytes, maybe a gig if you're lucky. Um, so honestly, I would probably stick with XP and remember if you're using windows XP, don't use it on the internet because there is no security updates from Microsoft anymore. And there is a high risk of you getting, um, viruses. The Cardboard Maker Studio asks, do you think Chromebooks are good? That's a loaded question. Um, it depends on what you're going to be using your Chromebook for. And I actually touched on this in a previous live stream that I did. 
Uh, Chromebooks are nice for college students, um, maybe business people that are on the go that really just need to have access to the internet and maybe do research. Um, it is good if you have, um, in the sense that you can have Microsoft Office installed on it. Um, but remember, you cannot run the majority of Windows applications on there because it's not a Windows-based system. It's Chrome OS. So it really just depends on what your needs are. Um, if you're somebody that's looking to mainly do everything online, then yeah, it's great. Pretty much anything you could do online, web-based, you could do with a Chromebook. Eric Brunhammer says, I think the reason a lot of older technology is returning is because people are nostalgic looking back to the days when their days were more simple. I have to agree with that. And honestly, I don't want to be that person, but I think 9-11 uh, changed a lot, uh, a lot more of our society than we originally realized. I noticed it dramatically after that, and not necessarily um, a de it was a decline in attitude, not necessarily like productivity and not even necessarily quality of life, because I think we actually have a pretty decent quality of life on the whole uh, now that you know we're out of the recession and uh, pretty much things are getting back to normal. But mentally, we never really recovered from that. I think um, a lot of us are still uh, on the alert all the time. And give you a great example. When I go to film a video or a vlog outside of the house, I always get looks. If, I have, if I'm shooting with anything other than my cell phone, I'll get people come up and say, what are you doing? I don't want you filming me. Make sure you do not film me. And even if I have the cell phone, I'm being discreet. Sometimes I have people do the same thing. I think we are so preoccupied with what might happen in the future that we're forgetting to live in the now. And it's really sad, honestly. Mark Covington asks, do you think eight track tapes may ever come back? I don't know about that one. Um, I loved eight track tapes. You may not know this, but I actually collected them back in the day. I still probably have about 500 of them in my closet. And I was nostalgic for them. I still am now. I thought they were really cool. I mean, you could switch between tracks really quick. You could switch songs immediately, which you couldn't do with a cassette. But to be perfectly honest, they were never the most reliable uh, of apparatus. And they, they still aren't. Um, they tended to break very easily. The, the actual tape they used was, um, was very um, brittle and would tend to just break in half at times. So if you ask my personal opinion, I would say probably not. Uh, cassettes are much more likely, and they're already on the, on the upswing again. Okay, I386 got a notification. That's good. A lot of you have told me you have not been getting notifications for my live streams, and I unfortunately can't do anything about it. That's all on YouTube. And uh, I'm trying to keep myself hydrated. I've started drinking um, Polar. This is Polar 100% natural seltzer, black cherry. I actually really like the flavor of this one. But I do also have my trusty jug of regular spring water I get from Aldi, pure aqua, as they call it. I love this stuff. Good flavor. Ah. Ah, so refreshing. Re Reese Hayden. I recently got an Acer Aspire V5 with an AMD A4 1250 1 gigahertz processor, 4 gigs of RAM and a 500 gig hard drive, which I replaced with a 275 SSD. And a Radeon HD 8210. Decent graphics. I plan to use it for school and basic game design. Yeah, you should be good for school work. Um, I don't know about game design. Uh, it's got, Even though it is a Radeon 8000 series, it's still an integrated card, so you might struggle there a little bit. Um, what did he put there? Yes, I would definitely upgrade it to 8 gigabytes of RAM, if at all possible. Um, they're basically saying now the minimum 
you should be running for Windows 10 is four gigs. Um, but I tend to, whenever I refurbish a computer, I always make sure it has at least six or eight gigabytes of RAM because it runs just that little bit better. And you, uh, you don't get a lot of things like um, programs crashing or intermittent page fault errors, things like that. Robert Jones, Matt, what are your thoughts on having a phone connected to your car radio? Um, well, it depends on how you have it connected. There are a couple ways to do it. Bluetooth probably being the most popular, and number two, using one of those little uh, headphone uh, cables. Um, either way, I mean, there's nothing wrong with it. You know, you got to remember something. A lot of states now have laws against you talking on your cell phone no matter what, even if it's over Bluetooth. So don't take it as, oh, yeah, I can connect my phone to the radio. I have that microphone up near my head, and yeah, I could just be chatting away while I'm driving. Don't think that way because it is still considered distracted driving. And I don't have a list in front of me, but there are quite a few states that even that is becoming illegal. So just got to be really careful. And if you're talking about having your phone connected to your car stereo for music purposes, uh, you're better off having it physically connected with something, again, like that, um, that actual headphone cable because... Bluetooth, although it's convenient, the sound quality, in my experience, is not that great. You have a lot of dropouts. You have a lot of echoing. Like, if you ever listen to a song and you hear kind of like a an echo in the background, like it's kind of repeating itself, that tends to happen a lot with Bluetooth. Okay, Eric said he got a half an hour notification. I've yet to see the live notification. <sighs> yeah, I don't know what to do about it. There really isn't anything I can do. Again, this is all pretty much on YouTube whenever they decide to fix that glitch. Cardboard Maker Studio, I'm getting back into retro tech. Do you think I should make a YouTube video about it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Some of my most watched videos were on what, what would have been considered at the time and still is retro tech. Uh, one being my, the old Mac G4 sawtooth that I had over there, over near that printer for years. Uh, another one was that IBM uh, ThinkPad that I got. I can't remember the model, but it was like a late 96, early 97, which I actually need to take back out. Believe it or not, it's been sitting in that closet. Uh, ever since I made that video, which was probably five or six years ago, and I uh, never got back to using it again. I kind of could kick myself for that, but just been busy doing other things. Sonic Wang, I have an old motherboard I got for free, no CPU or RAM. Uh, Except I have a one terabyte hard drive. I also have two four gigabyte RAM sticks, so eight gigs there. Power supply going to get cheap, twenty dollar case. It is get. Is it worth getting a first gen i three CPU for it? Uh, with eight gigs of RAM, I honestly, and a one terabyte hard drive, I would probably try to go for an i five because honestly, if it's a first gen board. The first-gen i5s are not that much more expensive than the uh, first-gen i3s. I would try to get an i5. Um, if not, yeah, absolutely. Uh, you should, I mean, to give you a rough idea if you're refurbishing this to resell, a first-gen i3 with 8 gigs of RAM and a 1 terabyte hard drive, you could pair, maybe pair that with a monitor. Depending on the size monitor you, you would put with it, I would probably try to go with something like a 20 or a 22-inch keyboard and mouse and put a nice pair of speakers with it. You'd be able to get at least $160 to $200 for that computer. I know a lot of you are saying, what? How can you get that much for a first-gen i3? People will buy them, and it is well worth that, believe it or not. I mean, they're, they're still very usable systems. I mean, heck, up until about a year ago, I was still selling Core 2 Duos for around that price. Now, it's much harder to ship Core 2s. But again, there are still people that can use them.
I threw a six. I put my bed back in the room my computer is in. I don't have much room now. My mother wants to make the room. I had a guest room. Yeah, we do the best with what we have. When I lived in New York and I was, you know, working on computers, I lived in a room. My room was about a quarter of the size. My room, I kid you not, was only slightly bigger than that alcove there. And I made it work somehow. Mark Covington, what Windows operating systems? Let me let me move up a little bit here. I got to kind of shift my butt cheeks around a little bit. What Windows operating systems do you think may be the best for me to use on a computer? I decide to use just for a music player. Uh, will an internet connection help? That is a very good question. My preferred operating system for um, like a music server is Windows 2000 because my favorite version of Winamp that I use is version uh, 11, 14, 16, something like that. It was from 2011. And that version tends to run best on Windows 2000. Now, if you're running Windows 2000, you need to be very careful. I would not recommend having an active internet connection on it, mainly because, once again, Microsoft does not officially support it, and they're not actually putting um, updates, security updates out. So, uh, no, I would not recommend having an internet connection, at least an active one on there, um, and Windows 2000. Definitely my favorite choice. And uh, if you ever want, if we, when we can get up together one of these days, I can actually give you a, a copy of Windows 2000 and a copy of that version of Winamp that I love so much. Reviews for noobs. Do you like techno music? Yeah, on and off. It's not my favorite, honestly. I, I'm more classic, classic rock, classic country, uh, Christian Christian music. We got 14 watchers and 12 likes. Thank you guys so much for giving me those likes. It really does help boost my videos uh, when it comes to the YouTube search engine. Wind Pamp. That's funny. I never I never heard that one. That was uh, I386. Cardboard mixer. I have an old IBM 5150 with a shot power supply and CPU, not to mention the case is busted and it's missing a floppy. What should I do? I'm skilled in fixing. Okay, so probably one of those tantalum capacitors blew in the power supply. That's probably why that shot. Uh, CPU, CPU is shot and the case is busted. Honestly, I would probably make that a part system. And the fact that it's missing a flop, you'd be really, really hard to put that all together. Um, if you live anywhere near Computer Reset down in Texas, they got tons of those IBM 5100, 5150s lying around. I would probably try to find some way to get down there to pick one up or maybe call a friend that's going there and have them pick it up for you. That That would be my recommendation. From what you're telling me, I think... I think that computer is probably past any type of restoration. Reese Hayden, I have another question. I'm clueless on my computer's value. I have an HP Z420 workstation with a Xeon E5 quad core, 20 gigabytes of ECC RAM, 500 gig hard drive, and a Radeon RX 550. What could I get for it? That's a decent system, especially with the E5 uh, quad core Xeon. Plenty of RAM. Um, the hard drive is a little on the small side. I would probably recommend trying to put a little bit larger hard drive in there or maybe putting a second drive in there to try to bump your total capacity up to like one terabyte. Um, for that computer, again, I would list it uh, for sale with a monitor, a keyboard and mouse, and then maybe a nice pair of speakers. Um, something like that would probably sell in the 260 to $300 range in my area. Uh, again, nice system. Uh, make sure you have a fresh install of windows. I, I know a lot of people are not going to agree, but I would say load it up with windows 10 professional. Um, even though that may have originally come with something like windows seven or windows eight, you're going to have a much easier time selling that computer if it's running Windows 10. 
Let me know how it goes, Reese. I'm, I'd be very curious to see what you can make uh, from that computer. Robert Jones, Matt, is there an old OS that is good for a media center? Well, the first one to come to mind would be Windows XP Media Center Edition 2005. Um, that actually had a built-in media center uh, player there. And if you have a computer that has a uh, TV tuner card, it's fully functional with that. And I believe the 2005 version was even HDTV compatible. Eric says, Eric Brunhammer says, I've been listening to Christian music a lot at work lately. I've had a few customers that actually appreciate it. I do too. When I do my workouts in the morning, um, I go on my bike ride. Uh, I have my little um, bottle speaker with me. I'll have to show that to you guys sometime. I keep that in one of the cup holders of my bike, my uh, coffee in the other, and I'm pumping out uh, a lot of Christian music, Petra, uh, Newsboys, uh, Chris Tomlin sometimes. I don't know if you guys may or may not know those groups, but I love it. Absolutely love it. I am Pon. I'm Pon. Something like that. Do you know how to solve a GeForce GTX 1050 2 gigabyte and a Dell XPS A300, but I'm still having problems using it? Okay. A few things that it could be. The very first thing I would do is make sure on your Dell XPS A300 that you have the latest BIOS revision. Um, go to their website. Uh, so actually, do a Google search for Dell XPS A300 BIOS and download and install the latest version. Uh, mainly because I remember uh, with my uh, 8700, I had a very similar card to that uh, years ago, and it didn't play nicely with the motherboard on there either. And it all had to do with the fact that uh, it had an older BIOS that wasn't uh, UEFI, fully UEFI compliant, and that was what was causing the problem. So go to Dell's website, download the latest um, BIOS revision, see if you're still having issues once you install it. Um, if you're still having issues after that, then what you need to do is make sure you have the latest uh, driver for that GTX 1050, and you can go to NVIDIA's website and get that. Oof, let me take another sip of water here. Yep, we got another person that recommends XP Media Center Edition. It actually was a decent version of Windows XP Media Center. Uh, we sold, when I worked at Best Buy, we sold a lot of computers with XP Media Center Edition, mainly because they were priced similarly to the other computers at the time that were running XP Home. And a lot of people didn't know this. XP Media Center Edition was actually XP Professional with the Media Center added to it and that actually was a really uh inexpensive way to get hp um uh, xp professional without having to pay the professional price i didn't know that he said i386 i have noticed kroger will sometimes play some christian songs i guess songs that are secular but have an inspirational meaning it's a gray area. Um, you're probably talking about like Creed, um, POD, those kind of groups were technically secular, but they had uh, religious or Christian undertones in the in the in the music. Eric goes, I should have a video coming tomorrow that should be pretty good. Now, not tech related, but it should come out good. Well, that's awesome. I'll make sure I watch it. Hopefully, I get the alert about that. Incidentally, I also, and this is not tech related, but I was curious what you guys thought about the uh, Instapot video that I put up, the when we cooked the chicken and rice, those of you that actually saw that. Um, I'd like to get some ideas for uh, doing more of those, because that video was actually done really well um, for me with a cooking video. Got 180 views, but 25 likes on that. So let me know what you guys think you, you'd like to see me cook in that Instapot next. I'm, I have some ideas that, of stuff that I'd like to cook, but uh, let's see if you guys can come up with some better ones. Excuse me. 
Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> it's what happens when you drink seltzer. Puppy Linux is the best for old PCs. Ran on a Pentium 3 with uh, 384 megabytes of RAM. Yeah, I do remember that. I've never run it myself personally, but I know a few people that have. And yeah, it, it runs really well on older equipment. Cardboard Maker Studio. I have closets full of old retro tech and stuff like speakers, joysticks, monitors, Windows 95, 98 machines. I have a lot. I'm having a ton of fun. If but I, what is it? I have a ton of fun. But I said reselling it along with XP PCs, and I'm using it. Oh, okay, so you're you're trying to fight keeping it versus reselling it. Well, you know what? Do half and half because believe it or not, a lot of those old computers again are coming back into fashion. People want um, old like Windows 95, 98 systems that they can play their retro games on. So, yeah, I mean, I can't tell you what to do there, but uh, yeah, it's it's tough. I want to keep a lot of my old tech too, but unfortunately, you know, I don't, I can't use it all, and you know, it'll start to decay and wear out. I'd rather put it in the hands of somebody that will enjoy it. <laughs> See if I'm missing anything here. I was actually watching a, uh, a video. It amazes me how many um, of the old Lincoln Town cars are still out there uh, with very low miles. Uh, Intellich Dude 300. Uh, just got in a 92 Lincoln Town Car Executive Series with 48,000 miles on it. I tell you, it makes me nostalgic for my uh, Lincoln Town Car. I really do miss that at times. I mean, I like the vehicles that I have now, but that Town Car was a solidly built. Um, really, it was a boat, honestly. And it had a lot of uh, good uh, technology features. It had the car computer built in. Had uh, climate control. Didn't have the dual climate control, but it had the uh, the single zone climate control where you could set set the temperature and it would do everything automatically. I don't actually have a vehicle like that anymore. All of mine have uh, manual uh, AC and heat controls. Cardboard Maker Studio. I'm from Ottawa, Canada, and the Instapot was developed and manufactured here. So I got a five-year anniversary tour and got so many exclusive cookbooks and accessories. Man, I'd like to tour that uh, facility. That would be very interesting because it is an amazing uh, tool for cooking quick meals. I mean, I cooked, we cooked a five-and-a-half-pound chicken in 20 minutes. Well, I'd say 27 minutes if you add in the preheating time, but that's still amazing. Any other way it would take hours to cook something like that. Roos or noobs, do you play any retro games like Doom, Quake 3, Wacky Wheels? <laughs> Wacky Wheels, that takes me back. Uh, yes, all of those. Jazz Jackrabbit, Tony Hawk, uh, Age of Empires. Not, I've never played Age of Empires or Microsoft Golf, but I've played a lot of Tony Hawk, a lot of Jazz Jack Rabbit. Um, I did not like Quake 3. I preferred Quake 2. Um, Doom, yeah. Uh, and another one you didn't mention, Wolfenstein 3D. The first official, uh, I believe, 3D game in that was, that was available for DOS. There may have been other attempts but it was the full three, first full 3D uh, first-person shooter that was really, really popular. Robert Jones, how was the chicken that? It was absolutely delicious. One of the, had to be the most moist chicken that I've ever had. And our company really enjoyed it too. Yes, I do remember. Uh, Pradkins had first mentioned about the 80s Lincoln Town Cars, and now uh, I-386 said uh, 1980s Lincoln Town Cars, some of them did have the built-in CB radios. It was actually, I believe, built into the factory radio, and um, that was not the only vehicle, believe it or not, that did that. Um, I think back in the 70s, you could find Cadillacs 
that had that as well. Um, I know the Eldorados did, um, the Fleetwood Bromes. Some of them did, though. A lot of people that had the Fleetwood Bromes, the real fancy ones, didn't opt for that because, let's face it, they were usually the high-class business people, and they usually weren't uh, on CB radios very much. I don't know why uh, chat window is deleting some of your uh, conversation or your, your conversation, our conversation. So I do apologize if you guys make a comment that I don't read. It's be probably because that's happening. The only thing it shows is comment is held for review. And when I go to click on show comment, it just deletes it. So I don't know what's going on here. Breaker Breaker 19, yeah, uh, something like you would have heard in Smokey and the Bandit. Have I ever used a CB radio? Many times. When I lived in New York, that was the only way I could communicate with my friends who lived up in the hills. Um, their phone, it was kind of a sad story. He was he, There was a single mother, and they didn't always have uh, money to pay the phone bill. So there were a lot of times where if I wanted to talk to him, the only way I could do it was through CB radio. And we had so many hills there. There were some nights that the reception was really lousy. I wound up actually asking my dad at the time to put my antenna on the roof so we could actually um, talk with each other and have a clear signal. I-386, I saw a picture of Donald Trump in 1978 standing by a car and had a CB antenna. I'll have to look that up. I don't know if I've ever seen that picture. Uh, let's see. Probably not going to be able to find it now that I'm looking for it. Yeah. Just figured I'd do a quick search, see if it was it was out there somewhere. Chris Bartlett is here. Now you're not too late. We're we're gonna be here for a little while yet. 16 watchers, 16 likes. Oh, not not necessarily technology related, but I want I got a story for you. Um, I was redoing the carpet in the back of the Chevy Tahoe because the guy that owned it before me used it for um, carpet installs and the, the original carpet was just totally gone. It was chewed up. So I went to cut the carpet for the piece that goes uh, under the toolbox and I actually pulled out the uh, little store, the cover for the storage container on the right side, which incidentally in Tahoe's uh, the on the passenger side holds the jack. And when I opened up, there was a whole bunch of junk that came out. And the one thing I saved was this. Check this out. This is a Walt Disney World Sports, Disney's Wide World of Sports, uh, Ultimate Inline Hockey Puck, the experience number three. It says August 90, what's it say? August 31st to September 4th. 2000. Check that out. I don't know if my camera will focus on it. Let's see. Come on. Got to point to it, I think. There we go. Isn't that cool? I mean, who knows how long it's been there. It could have been there since the year 2000, but I just thought that was really, really cool. I, I, I honestly thought so too, Eric. I thought this might be worth something. I mean, it's kind of chewed up though. If you look on the side, it's definitely been well used. Somebody used this for playing hockey, apparently. And I mean, it's solid. This is definitely a real puck. I just thought it was really cool. And honestly, I still find stuff. Like I try to clean under the seats and I've been pulling up a lot of um, like crevices and, and the carpet in different areas and still finding some really cool stuff. And it can happen when you have a vehicle that's 20 plus years old and you never know what you're going to find when you start cleaning. Use it as a coaster. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Will it work that way? Well, kind of. Yeah. Holds my drink just fine. Good idea, Matt Richardson. 
<laughs> I, <laughs> Mr. Smash 96, I thought you couldn't say D I S N E Y on YouTube. I don't know about that. Uh, hopefully, I'm not going to get in trouble for saying it. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. I think he's just joking. I mean, I know a lot of people say it. <laughs> we got 15 people here, 16 likes. Thank you guys so much for that. Always appreciated. Oh, my goodness. My nose is so itchy. I don't know. I might have been out in the sun a little bit too long. And, uh, yeah, nobody's mentioned it. But, yeah, I did wind up getting a haircut today. It was really bugging me. And she did a good job, except I asked her to trim over the ears because the, air ten, the hair tends to um, grow quickly and it'll grow over and cover my ears and it drives me crazy. And I don't think she really did it. She actually cut this area back a little bit where I have my in, where my forehead indents on the side. But I wanted her to really cut the hair here really low because before my next haircut the hair will just start growing over the ear and it just doesn't feel pleasant, especially when you're out in the summer heat. <laughs> I 36, you just got two likes from me, both accounts just make up for those dislikes. I appreciate it. And I can actually check on it. Usually if I open an incognito window, which kind of logs me out, I can actually search for my channel and I can see what Channel. the like and dislikes and are. I can. So we got 17 dislikes and four, or 17 likes and four dislikes. Well, you know why. <laughs> That's really see, cool. Yeah. Like and dislikes are. I can. You can hear a little bit of the delay. 17 dislikes and four, or 17 likes and four dislikes. Well, you know why. That's surreal. <laughs> that is really surreal. I don't know. People have nothing better to do than to troll channels, probably. Matt Richardson, have you ever showed your Laserdisc collection in a video? I don't think I have. I've showed random Laserdiscs before, but I don't think I've actually shown my entire collection, which is sitting right over there by all my barbells, or I should say my weights. And I probably have three or 400 Laserdiscs. Um, maybe in another video when I get some extra time, definitely a good idea. Thanks. Thanks for reminding me. Carbon maker studio says floppy disks. I got tons of them. I actually picked up, uh, hang on. Let me grab these. Cause I, I wanted to show you this the other day. Yeah, I know I'm wearing really short shorts. I'm actually in my pajamas. I wanted to get comfortable for this live stream. Um, but I found this at a garage sale the other day of all places. And I thought this was really cool. Uh, this is a new old stock from, of, of all places, service merchandise. The new color Kodak color diskettes. These are five and a quarter inch. Uh, what are these? Double sided, double density. So those would be 760K discs, I think. Uh, yeah, I, might, I may be wrong on that, but I'm going to say that's probably what they are. Um, I'm going to read something to you on here. It says Kodak brings you all the best quality, innovation, color. New Kodak color diskettes in easy to identify colors brings convenience and organization to your home or office. Suggested use assign a subject or category to each color. Example red for inventory management, blue for finance, etc. Plus, the new color diskettes carry the Kodak guarantee. If your Kodak color diskette is found to be defective, Kodak will replace it at no cost. No other warranties are expressed or implied. And then it gives the, the actual phone number of Kodak. 
Um, the box is a little crunched, but if you look up there, you can see the discs. And if I can get the right angle, actually, I got to turn that off. But you can see the different colors in there. I can see red, orange, and blue through the window. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was really cool seeing that service merchandise tag. And the price on these, uh, $7.97. And the really cool thing down here is I, I found interesting, which kind of dates this. For use with IBM PCs and compatibles, Commodore 64, Apple II, and other compatible double-sided soft sector uh, PC systems. And this has a copyright of 1988. Let me know what you guys think. Something really cool. Definitely a blast from the past. I'm really fighting opening this because, you know, this is new old stock. This is something that I could probably sell on eBay even in its um, current condition. You know what? What the heck? We're going to open it. We're going to open it. I'm going to break the seal. Stop me from doing this. Please stop me. I'm, I'm, I'm committing, you know what, treason doing this. No! It's broken! Ah! No! What have I done? <laughs> no, I shouldn't have done that. Oh, well. It's too late now. All done. Wow, that was actually a uh, plastic window there. <laughs> Let's see. Let's check them out. What do you think? So that was the cover. And uh, first thing I'm pulling out here, the labels. Let me see if I can even open these anymore. Ooh, shiny and new. Let's see if the adhesive still is good. Yeah. Yeah, believe it or not, the adhesive is actually still good on these. So we got all the different labels here for the discs. Now, I kind the reason I didn't mind opening these, don't freak out. I didn't, I didn't, you know, I didn't do anything really bad. And the reason is you can see that these discs are definitely bent. And does that mean that they're never gonna work? They might still work, but honestly. That's a pretty bad crease in them. So I would probably say these discs are going to be no good. Um, but it's still really cool. It has been so many years since I've held a five and a quarter inch floppy disc in my hand. And you got to admit, even in this day and age, these things are really cool. Yeah, most people remember the three and a half inch discs. And they were called floppy discs, but they really weren't because they had a hard shell. These are most definitely floppy in every sense of the word. It's really a shame that they, they're bent like that, though. I was really hoping that they weren't. And, uh, well, might be able to save a few of them. The red ones here aren't as bad. These, these, were, these were spared the bulk of the damage. And then the orange ones, let's see. Yeah, the orange ones actually look pretty good. The ones towards the middle hardly have any creases in them at all. So I'll probably save them, maybe put the uh, labels on them, see if they stick. But, uh, yeah, definitely cool. Moving on. They just went all over my bed, but oh well. Well, uh, Nick Roberts asked, do you own any three and a half inch, two megabyte floppies? Well, technically almost every, um, three and a half inch floppy disc you could get, uh, is two megabyte capable. It's just that most, uh, floppy drives format it to 1.44 megabytes. Um, but yeah, I mean, I own probably a thousand or so floppy discs. Who knows if I'm ever going to use them or not? Probably will. Carbar Maker Studio said, I just got a trip to computer reset arranged. Oh, I am definitely jealous. I know as a Christian, I shouldn't say that, um, but I want to get down there. Unfortunately, um, I just don't have the resources right now to do it. Again, I would do it if, if there was somebody out there that would be willing to sponsor a trip down there. I'd be willing to film it 
and you know show you guys my adventures down there but as it sits right now it's just not going to happen at least for the time being eric goes next 200 dollars i get from driving lift i am buying a welder now that should be interesting you could definitely make some good videos out of welding <laughs> Chris goes, just put something on the top. They will flatten out. Maybe. Nick Roberts goes, I hate how floppy disks would fail after two or three times using it. I had some that would do that, but if you bought really reliable ones, and these Kodak ones back in the day were actually really good quality disks, they would last a long time actually have a story for you guys, and it does relate to these particular brand of discs. I have a good friend that mentored me uh, named uh, Richard, and uh, I'm not going to give any last names, but I'll never forget that um, years ago, we would go over to their house, and this was in the early 90s, and I would be awed by the amount of computer equipment that he had lying around. And he had a Bible program that at the time was pretty revolutionary. And I really liked it because it was the King James version. And that was the one that we were reading in church. And I asked him if I could have a copy of the program. And wouldn't you know that back then that particular um, version of the Bible, uh, digital version Bible took 10 floppy disks. So he took a brand new, brand new uh, carton of these exact Kodak color floppy disks. And he copied that for me. And, you know, to this day, I think I still have that sitting in my closet. And I just remember it very fondly because he was very, very nice. He is still around. We're still, we still keep in touch. And he is the one that got me into computers back in the day. Just a very uh, nostalgic time in my life. Yes, Nick, I did make an illegal copy because, yeah, technically back then it was still don't copy that floppy, but we all did it, and, yeah, we're all guilty of it. Uh, I don't – technically I don't think Kodak is still in business. I know that they are in one form or another, but in their original form, no, I don't believe they are. It's only a backup. Yeah, that was the excuse. All right, tubers, I am going to end the live stream here. I'm getting really tired. I actually wound up walking 22,000 steps today. Plus, I also got a 13-mile bike ride in, so I am royally tired. Please continue to like and subscribe. And as always, have a blessed day, everybody.